Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and you're watching episode 122 of From the Luthier's Workbench. When you watch a lot of videos of other luthiers making guitars, it's easy to think, wow, those guys are absolute masters at what they're doing. They have the right tools and every guitar they make is a flawless work of art. And the truth is, as most luthiers can attest, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you don't often see in videos, and that is solving problems that can come up during the construction process. Uh, oftentimes, mistakes can be made, and there can also be flaws in the wood that we're using, because let's face it, the wood is coming from Mother Nature, and Mother Nature likes to throw us a curveball every now and then. Um, in this uh, particular instance, when I began building this guitar, I made a simple mistake. When I make a guitar body, I use my CNC machine and I'm using several files to carve the whole body out. I have one file for the front carve, which includes this contoured edge, the pockets, and then I have another file which is for the back and that includes the belly relief, the control cavity, and then I've got this scallop in the front where the neck meets the heel. And when I created these files, my plan was to make the guitar body a fairly typical one and three quarter inch thickness. So I created those files, I saved the G code and was all ready to go, but several weeks went by before I actually uh, went to carve this body. And during that time, I decided I wanted to make the body one and five eighths inches thick instead of one and three quarter. That would shave uh, an eighth of an inch off its thickness, which would give me a little bit uh, lighter, slightly more svelte guitar shape. And normally that wouldn't make any difference because when I carve on the CNC machine, I have to set the bit at the XYZ home position, which is usually in the lower left corner of the blank. And so it doesn't really matter the overall thickness because it's going to carve away the same amount regardless of that thickness. So my bevel, my pickup, and my neck pockets are always going to be the same depth and it's not going to matter how thick the body is. The problem is when I went to do the back, I failed to take into account that making the body thinner was going to mean that the scallop was going to be closer to the bottom of my neck pocket. So in the end, what I have is a heel that at the front is only about an eighth of an inch thick. And I typically like to keep at a minimum of a quarter of an inch so I have enough wood to support the neck and to prevent cracking and that sort of thing. So I was a little bit worried after I pulled this body off the CNC machine that I had made this mistake. I didn't, I didn't adjust the file to make this scallop a little a little more shallow so that the pocket would be, or that, that area of wood under the pocket would be, would be thicker. So I was faced with um, two choices basically. One was to scrap the body and start over, fix my files and make that heel the correct thickness. Or I could try to find a way to reinforce this area, make it strong enough to function properly and still give me this really nice dished out shape. So rather than throw away a perfectly good piece of mahogany, I decided to try and reinforce it. And this is how I did that. In this photo, you can see how thin the body wood is under the heel of the neck. And I just don't think that's gonna be enough wood to adequately support the neck. And it'll also lead to some cracking. To reinforce the neck pocket, I fabricated an insert made from carbon fiber. I made this insert by cutting nine squares of carbon fiber cloth, which I stacked up onto a sheet of wax paper, which was placed on top of a slab of MDF board. In between each carbon fiber layer, I uh, added a dollop of two-part 30-minute epoxy. And then on top of the stack, I placed another sheet of wax paper and then another slab of MDF board. Everything was then clamped together and the clamps were left in place for 24 hours in order to allow for the epoxy to fully cure. The plan was to glue the insert and the neck in the body all at the same time. So after I inserted the carbon fiber insert 
I applied um, a layer of, a, of 30 minute epoxy to the top of the carbon fiber. Next, I applied some tight bond wood glue to the sides of the guitar neck and then slid it down into the pocket. Neck fit is snug on the sides, but I wanted to make sure I had good contact with the bottom of the heel and that carbon fiber plate, so I used several clamps to clamp everything together. And then I just let it sit for 24 hours to allow for the glue to uh, fully cure. And that's how I reinforced the neck pocket in the body of this guitar. And after the glue had fully cured, uh, I went back and, and as you can see, there is no issues with the strength of this joint. I'm pretty confident that I could jump up and down on this guitar and it wouldn't, it's not gonna break the heel. I think the neck further up is more likely to break before the, the heel will break. And I think in truth, the ultimate test of this neck joint will be tuning stability later on after I've assembled the guitar and strung it up. But based on my experience with building guitars, I don't think that this neck joint is gonna pose any problems uh, with regard to tuning stability. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. And now I know that I can always use carbon fiber as a way to um, greatly strengthen um, a neck joint. And um, you know, who knows? It's, carbon fiber is a lot of fun to work with and it's an interesting material. Um, but that may be opening up a whole nother can of worms when it comes to um, playing with other possibilities with carbon fiber. But the reason why I wanted to show this technique is not because I think uh, it's something that any of you will ever encounter when building a guitar, but what it shows is that a luthier like myself will oftentimes run into issues where you have to solve the problem. And I hear from guys all the time who will um, uh, email me or message me and, with a question about a problem that they've run into, and their first reaction is just to throw out the guitar and start over. And my advice is always, before you do that, try to think of a way out of that problem. And it's like an art teacher used to tell me when I was in school that um, you have to celebrate the happy accident. Sometimes you'll have a mistake or an accident happen, but if you find a way to solve the, the mistake or the accident, you can actually end up with something that's even better than what you had before or where you were headed in the beginning. So uh, don't just throw out something because you made a little bit of a mistake. Now that's not to say all mistakes can be fixed, but oftentimes if you, you make a goof, <laughs> a, the solution that you come up with can result in something that's better or more interesting, more exciting. So that's it for this episode and we will see you um, in my next quick tips, which I'll put up next week. Uh, I'm thinking about doing something about all the tools that I use that I purchased from the dollar store. <laughs> That'll be interesting. And um, the next episode uh, of from the Luthier's Workbench, which will be episode 123. So until then, take care. Have a great weekend, a great week ahead. Uh, hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you don't already subscribe. And... Um, I will see you soon. Take care.